Hello, welcome to Jibrin Angle on Oweleke TV. Once again, um, we have a show uh, this morning that will be featuring Barista Austin Manta, who is uh, a regular guest on this show, regular and consistent guest, actually. Um, today we shall be talking about um, several topics. I think about three, about three or four topics. We shall be delving into three, two or three or four topics. Yeah, we shall be talking about the three hundred percent increase in the electrical tariff. We shall be talking about Sunny Uber confrontation with a uh, Um, We know what's happening. Uh, what is happening in uh, Cardinal State? Cardinal State for some years now has been known for all negative things, all negative stuff. So we shall be talking about that. And uh, we shall also be talking about the rumor. We had rumor, um, Daniel Boala, um, we had uh, when he, he, the rumor from, I think uh, the first time I heard it was from his mouth that um, uh, Peter B and uh, uh, Rufai are planning to a kind of um, uh, pull forces together um, in anticipation to contest against Tinubu in 2027. We shall also be talking about um, Port Harcourt, River State, um, where Governor uh, Fubara and Wiki, uh, their thoughts will seem to have uh, resurfaced again. We shall be talking about that. Uh, there are so many of this stuff that um, will depend on uh, Barrister Austin Manta to um, update or give us uh, the latest update and uh, because um, um, he is um, a very, very, when it comes to current affairs, uh, you can't get it better anywhere. Um, so um, he is, um, once again, for those of you who do not know uh, Barry Samantha, he is a legal practitioner, a practicing lawyer for almost 40 years now. And um, when you talk about lenacy, um, he is indeed the epitome of uh, when when lawyers refer to themselves as learned. Um, I have met so many lawyers who well, they are they, they are learned, but in the case of Barry Samantha, he is the epitome of lenacy. He is a lawyer that actually seems to know virtually every any topic you bring to him, he has knowledge of every topic every every topic we've discussed we've been we've been we've discussed so many topics over the years before this program started so um uh, his knowledge has been tested over the years and that is why he is um our regular our regular guest on this show in fact in 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 reality we are co-presenters that is just um, that is just the way i'll put it because uh, he seemed to be the um, the one piloting this stuff together with me. So, Barista Manta, thank you once again for joining us today. Thank you very much. Yours. Um. Yes. Uh, can you give us your own opinion about uh, this uh, three hundred percent increase in tariff, electrical in electricity tariff? Yes. Um... Um, but before that, let me say that from uh, Nigeria's population of over 200 million, we have about 12 million electricity consumers. That is a percentage of uh, less than 10 percent. Are you serious? That, uh, yes, uh, oh connected God. to the national grid. Just 12 million. Just 12 million. Out of 200 and something million. Out of the population of over 200 million. My God. So that shows really? you the, the, the problem from the foundation where you are talking about electricity uh, issues in Nigeria. Then you, these 12 million consumers are divided into five bands, A, B, C, D, and E. That is on the books of the electricity companies. The A group is the group that is supposed to have electricity 20 to 24 hours a day. So I, we have been told on, on paper that some places in Nigeria are getting 
virtually 24 hours uh, electricity supply. Of course, we know in practice that that is a false food of the highest order. There is no place in Nigeria that has 20 to 24 hours electricity supply. But in the books and uh, in the policy of the electric electricity officials, the band A are the ones that have 20 to 24 hours electricity supply. The band B are the ones that have 16 to 20 hours electricity supply. The band C, 12 to 16 hours, band D, 8 to 12 hours, and band E, 4 to 8 hours. So when the increase came, as of now, the highest um, electricity tariff is about 66, 68 naira per kilowatt per hour. So they have increased it from that 66 to 225 naira. That is about 300% increase. Now, they are telling us that that increase only affects the band A. That is those who are supposed to have uh, 20 to 24 hours supply for the moment that it does not affect the other categories of uh, uh, electricity consumers as they abandoned them. But we know what happens in Nigeria. Even when you do not get that 24 or 20 to 24 hours uh, supply, they will, they will put you in the band as a band A consumer. According to their statistics, they have 800 feeders that are enjoying uh, 20 to 24 hours supply. But even them have acknowledged that that figure is bogus and that they are going to draw down some of those people because in actual fact, they are not getting that. So you see the, the seed for conflict is that the seed for manipulation is already there. I will be enjoying four hours or six hours of electricity, but I will be bid according to the band A. And I will also be affected by the, the increase. But even more than that, the real issue is, these people seem to be uh, uh, testing the Nigerian people. They seem to be testing the will and capacity of the Nigerian people to resist unpopular and sinister government policies. Everybody knows what happened with petrol from uh, 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 where they jumped to where it is today. Now, the whole effect on the economy from that precipitous jump in petrol prices has hardly died down. In fact, it's part of the problem that has compounded the economic uh, situation in Nigeria. Then here you are again doing the same thing in the energy sector that is as vital to the country's economy as the petroleum sector. So it's like uh, they really want to see if Nigerians really have the guts to come out and challenge the government. Because it's, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Assuming you want to um, increase uh, prices, what can you do gradually so that the economy can absorb, businesses can absorb it gradually instead of coming overnight and increasing the price 300%. That's going to uh, give shock to every business and the whole economy, just like the increase in petroleum prices did. So I don't understand the rationale and the reasons. When you say you want to spur private uh, investment in the electricity sector, it's a deception of the highest order because the electricity sector was privatized. You, when you privatize an enterprise, you want investors to come with their money and with their expertise, two issues, with their finance and with their expertise to invest in that sector, to improve the sector to, and uh, uh, for the sector to help the economy. But in Nigeria, we know that everything that is on the textbook, everything that we know in theory, the Nigerian situation defies it. 
because when you privatize, they do not get the people who have the finance. They do not get the people who have the technical ability to really improve that system. As soon as you hear privatization, a few Nigerians, privileged people, we, we simply go and uh, uh, first get some money, whether from banks or friends or other things, to buy the license. And once they buy it, they, are, they no longer have the finance. So they now turn to the Nigerian banks to raise equity. They, they now start putting pressure and blackmailing the government to increase the tariff. On, on any sector like electricity, it was privatized. The discourse have been uh, blackmailing government that, look, we are selling power below the cost. So you must increase the price. And being that electricity is a very critical sector, in some cases, the government who also, some of whose people are also part of the business on the other side, they have no choice. You buy, you privatize and buy in, and you want to recoup your money within two or three years. So what do you do? You blackmail the government and the government increases tariffs, increase prices. Instead of rerouting this uh, income into the, uh, the sector, they take it away. As part of money they have invested, they want to recoup it in two to three years. So at the end of the day, the sector is as dormant as you took it before. And that is why today the electricity sector, despite the so-called privatization, has not gone anywhere. The generation capacity has not improved. The transmission capacity has not improved. The average Nigerian has not seen uh, improvement in electricity uh, uh, supply. So that is where we are. Excuse me. Um, this is very unfortunate situation. You see, Nigeria's case, um, Nigeria, Nigeria's uh, situa current situation is like, um, uh, um, I think, a scenario in the Bible. I think the book of First Kings um, that talks about um, King Jeroboam. Um, for those of you who know King Jeroboam, the story, King Jeroboam was a was a child, a, a son of um, Solomon, King Solomon in the Bible. Um, when uh, the king died, the king before him died. Jeroboam um, became the king. And um, that was Solomon. Solomon died. Jeroboam became the king. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, was it Solomon? Yeah, I think um, I, I'm. I hope my my memory has not failed me. Yeah, I think it's Solomon. It was Solomon. Um, so when he died, the son actually took over, and the previous king Solomon. Uh, you know, Solomon was actually taxing. He made his. He was very rich. Everybody, um, everybody knows the story of Solomon. And um, so the tax here and there, some kind. No, not. It, no, no, it's not. It's not King Solomon. Sorry. Uh, anyway, um, I, one of one a, a king then. So when Jeroboam took over, and um, the elders confronted him, met him. They met and uh, they went to him and uh, asked him, "How do you intend to rule us?" Um, because the previous king didn't rule us well, we were he he was wicked. Um, he 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 ruled us with uh, whips, a sort of so with iron fist. So you, in your case, how do you intend to rule us? And and Jeroboam told him told the elders, um, the the king ruled with iron fist or ruled with whips, that I will rule with scorpion. So um, that is this is the case we have found ourselves. We were talking about Buhari, who was wicked, who was everything during Buhari regime. Everybody was crying, was uh, crying foul. Was everybody get felt frustrated? This man, people kept criticizing him. Every all criticism just fell into deaf ears. Fell on deaf ears. I mean, um, at the end of the day, now we have Tinubu. Tinubu has come just like Jeroboam. Tinubu is the Jeroboam of the first king, uh, the first king, 
the kings of the Bible. This is what we are having. Tunubu we are talking today is the Jeroboam. He is uh, Buhari chastised Nigerians with whips. Tunubu is chastising Nigerians with scorpion. That's exactly what is happening. Now tell me, there are two. There are two reasons why these things are happening. Why this crazy president is doing this? One of the reason, possible reason is this man just hate Nigerians. He's just he's just trying to point because he knows he is convinced in himself that he did not win a, this election. Even did not win the 2023 election. He is convinced. He knows it that Nigerians didn't they didn't vote for him. He knows it that Nigerians overwhelmingly voted against him. And he is pained, he is, he is angry. Um, he, is, he, is, he is trying to be vindictive. He is, is being vengeful at this time. That's exactly what, that is one of the reasons why he's doing this nonsense. Because I do not see any other reason. Now you first of all came in as a president, the first thing, your inauguration day, the first phrase that came out of your mouth, on the inauguration day, the first phrase that came out of your mouth was subsidy is gone. The first phrase, that was the first scorpion chastisement. This is, uh, how could he be different from King Jeroboam? First scorpion chastisement. The next thing again, you are talking about 300 increase, 300% 300 increase on electricity tariff. Who does that? What country increases, increases any tariff at such rates nobody so it's it it's either it, the possibility two possibilities are is that is either is he is trying to punish nigerians which i that is exactly what i feel okay that's exactly what i feel he's trying to punish nigerians for not voting for him the other possibility is that maybe you belong in that school of thought because you've been hammering on this um, and or are several shoes. The other possibility is that the man, is, the man, and everyone around him are stupid. They are clueless. They are brainless. They are daft. That's the other possibility. They are, they are, they don't know what to do. They don't know what they are doing. These are the two possibilities. And this, they, there's just no how you can tell me that whatever what, the reason behind what he is doing right now falls outside these two possibilities. Nothing. They, they, body language will tell you. Body language will speak to that effect. So I, I, I always, they, look, these are, uh, well, th these are the areas where, these are the areas that touches the masses directly. Can't you people see something, what I am seeing, that this man is purposely Purposely, really, really, really whipping, stinging, just like scorpions, stinging Nigerians, deliberately stinging Nigerians because we did not vote for him. Overwhelmingly voted against him. He is not popular, so he is angry. He's just being vindictive here. Otherwise, um, how could you just wake up and increase in, and begin to hit at the policy, hit at a, the policy that is directly that that directly impacts the po the common man on the street. This is this is crazy, for God's sake! All these categories A, B, C, D, up to F or whatever. Even if it gets to D, those, those that those are nonsense. Just like you said, those are nonsense because technically, the A no one. Technically, I don't think there's any category anybody that that falls into that category. So, um, uh, yet. Uh, yesterday, my office in Abuja, <laughs> but um, what, what is a uh, 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 prepared, uh, uh, what do you call it, unit? 20,000 20, Naira prepared unit. And what we had was, is it 86 or 87? 87, 87 units. Yeah? That is what we got. That means that you are already caught up in that increase. Yes, that's the point. Uh, the current rate is about sixty-eight naira per kilowatt. Yeah, that's that's the point. If you if you use twenty thousand to buy, uh, yes, it means they have already put you in band A. Now, of course, mm. you can you can you, you can manage that. Say, let me repeat that. This is a test. This nonsense that they say is for band A. 
they want to see the reaction of Nigerians. Before they will say, okay, ban B, ban uh, C, all these people are also affected by, by, they just say it because according to their statistics, that ban A is just about 15, 10 to 15% of the population, of the consumers. So they just, it's like flying a kite, let's do this and uh, say, okay, 90% uh, of consumers are not affected. Let's see the reaction before they can now apply to the rest of the so-called uh, ban. Yeah, that, that is the way the, that is the way government has been has been playing, dilly-dally with Nigerians, playing with our destinies, our futures. Yeah? So that is the point, for God's sake. Why would such a person, why, I, I don't know, Nigerians are so, so, we are too, not even so, we are too patient to a fault. We are too tolerating to a fault. We love, yeah, yeah I, sometimes ago, I think a couple of days ago, I was discussing with a friend on, he just chatted me on Facebook and I was saying, I was talking about Nigeria. I said, I said well, now when I put myself for this problem, uh, um, now when I put myself, I said, what could we, have, could we have done? I said, well, we, we could have protested, occupy the street and protest. He said, ah, for where? Who go do that one? Who won't die? That's the point. You have forgotten Fela, Fela Nicola put his uh, song that uh, the problem of Nigeria is that nobody wants to die. Some That's people say, I'm the, I'm the only son of my mother. Some mother would yeah, say, Yeah, yeah that, 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 that is the point we're talking about. The reason that yeah. you, you don't want to come out and, and sacrifice. For the rest of yes, the, that's the point. Yeah. Nobody wants mm. to sacrifice, but that's the point. People are that is the human selfishness in us, in sort of. So that is unfortunately we will keep we will keep look on. I keep saying it. I'm not I, somebody. People bashed me when I made that statement earlier. That uh, when I said that uh, after four years of boy Tinubu, Nigerians will uh, will be enmeshed in a whole lot of uh, deprivation. We, their lives will be all messed up or whatever. And I, I I am not look for our viewers. I I I am doing this out of the passion and affection I have for Nigeria as a nation, not because I I just I just chose to be pessimistic. I just chose to just talk or whatever. I, I am a I am a pragmatic. I, I am a pragmatist. I am pragmatic in nature. I look, I view things and assess situation and I pass my judgment. And that is just it. There is we are not going to get anything better from anything better than this. We, we will get worse on that. Who this this government is so insensitive to the plights of Nigerians. Extremely insensitive to the plights of Nigerians. We can't get it better. Those guys are just people, but Tunubu, they are just there, Tunubu and his cohorts. They have just come to share the Nigerian loot. Our resources, that's exactly what they are there for. That's the, what they are doing right now. And at the end of his tenure, Nigeria will be extremely, will be destroyed, unfortunately. Unfortunately, the economy will be so battered that uh, um, we can't recognize it anymore. Um, let's move to the next. Uh... Let me add. Let me add something on this issue. Yes. You see, the these people that are ruling us have sold themselves on the IMF and World Bank's false, uh, unverified theories that subsidies are bad for the economy. The government claim that they are spending up to almost up to three trillion on electric electricity subsidy, and therefore there is need to to take away, just like the claim they made in the petroleum uh, sector. They have also transported it to the energy sector that they are spending about three trillion on electricity subsidy and it's unsustainable. But we know that there is something, there's an undercurrent on it. This cannot in any way benefit the economy, the so-called removal of subsidy. For instance, everybody has cost of production. Yeah. Whether you are a, a, a factory person, whether even services, even the person, the woman that brings tomato to the to the market, she also has cost of uh, production. You can you can call it cost of production because whether she goes to a village market to buy and bring it to the to the town to sell, 
that is her cost of acquiring it. And she cannot sell it at that cost. She has to sell it at yeah, a higher yeah, cost. So this kind of increase affects everything. They, uh, they affect everybody. The increase in petroleum, the increase in electricity, they affect the whole cost of production. And that means prices will increase dramatically as we saw during the uh, uh, increase in petroleum uh, prices, which has wrecked the economy, which has put us in the problem where we are running Heta Sketa, setting up emergency economic uh, council, presidential economic council, all to deal with a situation that you created. And is now it... people are jumping up and down that the, the Naira is coming, <laughs> the Naira is coming down vis-a-vis -vis the dollar. Now, how can you rejoice? You you created the increase in the the decrease in the value of the of naira, course. and if you reduce it marginally, how should I applaud you? You create where where did you take the naira when you came, and where has it reached? So if you reduce it marginally, nobody should ask me to uh, clap for you. So this kind of economies it defies logic. It defies. It has never worked anywhere. You but see, somehow <clears throat> they have uh, been sold on that because virtually they are they are part of it. Yeah, part of the World Bank, part of the uh, IMF, part of the the neocolonialism by U.S. and Britain and Western countries. Yeah, but but yeah, but this economic uh, slavery. Yeah, but not. but but the problem is they say this same. I the, I hate IMF. I hate IMF. IMF are they are destroying African countries. I'm telling you. Unfortunately, they, they are pulling down all the subsidies in African countries, specifically Nigeria. Um, yet we have European countries who subsidize, even America, they subsidize, they, they subsidize some, I think, agriculture. They um they they subsidize in the Euro, in Europe the same thing. Subsidy is something that helps the economy. There's no doubt about that. Now, my problem, my problem with this issue of um taking um subsidy off because of the economy um i i i, I look i um i i i i am a physical uh, a fiscal a fiscal libra um i'm social conservative or fiscal libra because i believe that why i'm fiscal libra i i, I hate capital no that i don't really hate capital capitalism is good it's good for the economy not not uh not extreme not extreme capitalism not I just don't like extreme capitalism because extreme capitalism, just like we have in Nigeria, does not in America. It doesn't consider those people the weak. Extreme capitalism is just for the strong. We have forgotten that we have the weak in our midst. Even the Book of Deuteronomy, God says they shall never be poor. Poor, poor shall poor, the poor shall never diminish, shall never depart from our in our in our from our midst. So that is what we are talking here. We have the weak and the strong, but capitalism did just handles the, the, the strong. The, the, what, that's what we call survival of the fittest, which is not which is not the way a country should be run. I I I I, I, I the kind of policy of uh, I really 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 support and I'm, uh, and and, and I, I I desire is a is a policy that actually balances the the system. Where you have policies that help the, there are people that look. You tell say people, look, you have to be hardworking. You have look. There are people who naturally, no matter what you do, no matter whatever, they still remain lazy. They are it's in their DNA. It's in their DNA, and there are people, no matter what they do, they are hardworking. They still do a work hard, but things are not working out fine. Everybody, ha they, look, the people that the richest man, the richest woman, or the richest person on earth, or the, those, the top 1% that are rich, they are not where they are because they are. And I, I tell people this is look, it is the Bible cannot be wrong. When the book of Ecclesiastes says the race is not for the swift, neither is the battle for the strong. And so that it is time and chance, no matter what, it is not because they are brilliant, it's not because they are smart. There are poor people, the labor, laborers, the low income earners that are smarter. Some of them are smarter than those. Who, we have talented people who do not have, who are not, who are poor. So it is not about, it's about destiny again. Yeah, it is good to be hardworking or whatever, but sometimes no matter, we have people who are hardworking yet, but yet they cannot achieve success. They've not been able to achieve success. And some 
are lazy, naturally, lazy, no matter how you push them, they will remain that lazy because, look, some people are just created that way. You can't change them. But that is why you are the government, you're supposed to take care of everyone. Those the weak in our midst are so the strong is supposed to, the strong are supposed to take care of the weak in our midst. And that is where the government, that is where the government come to play because. I, this subsidy, like coming back to the subsidy, I do not expect government to take to to take subsidy off the on, off the table. Subsidy should be, it is should, it is a part of governance. It should be entrenched in, in the system. All we need is Nigeria. Problem is the corruption. We can comfortably take care of these subsidies and still become a a superpower a, a superpower in economy. All because our problem is that we lose all these resources. That is the problem. So but subsidy, is, it is bad for us to take subsidy because subsidy is what takes care of subsidy is what takes care of of the weak in our midst, and we are taking that that the only thing that the weak is benefiting from, we are taking it away from them. So what do you expect the weak to do? To die and go into crime, and that's exactly or go into crime. That's exactly what is happening now. That is one of the reasons. One of the things I was coming to. There are two reasons for removal of subsidy. One of them is to spur investment in the sector. And the second one is to free resources for government to, to, to use for the benefit of the people. In Nigeria, neither of these reasons work. That's the point. It has been demonstrated over the reason. When you free resources, those resources are stolen and looted for the benefit of the politicians or the ruling elite. So that, that reason does not stand. Uh, in That's the point. past, when the subsidy has been removed, it has not spurred the supposed investment in the sector. Never. So these two reasons are, cannot work. They have not worked in Nigeria. So they should not be used again and again for the reason to remove subsidy. And again, if you are removing subsidy, you can uh, uh, stagger it over several years. So that the economy can absorb it uh, gradually and uh, without being uh, upset, without being uh, 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 put in jeopardy. Yeah. But they are not doing that. You now see that when they remove subsidy on petroleum, the government got a lot of money in terms of revenue. Uh, did you know? Hold on. But, uh, but at the same time, the, 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 the value of the Naira dropped by even double digits so who is fooling who you get more money but the value is not is is not what it used to be so where I, where it is like motion without movement you are having a motion without movement do you know where they now they, now my my director uh, sent this message to me the, you know the, the the money they got from subsidy do you know how they are spending it the 90 billion 19 billion dollar naira subsidy for religious 90 billion out of the money they got from subsidy they are they they, they, they spent already 90 billion on pilgrimages you you are removing subsidy in electricity uh, electricity and subsidizing pilgrimage that's the point is it you remove you, subsidy you you you, 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 you electricity you, a critical sector of the yes economy. and and, and uh, you, are, you are funding yes pilgrimage, uh, pilgrimage. So who is fooling who? That's the point. Who is fooling who? So pilgrimage uh, that is contributing, pilgrimage that is contributing to the economy of another country. A country, that's, that's the point. That, that is resources the, here to the another country. That is the stupidity and the foolishness. That's why I said two things. Is it that the the Butinubu is doing this out of wickedness and vindictiveness, or him and his entire team are daft? They are stupid. That's just it. Um, it's unfortunate, honestly, very, very unfortunate. And Nigerians are just taking the unfortunately, we will still take everywhere. Can you imagine 300 such kind of increase just took place everywhere? Is still calm, everybody is still going about his or her business. Can you can you just imagine that for God's sake? Yesterday, tw by my office, they 20,000 they, they recharged, they tried to they paid 20,000 naira for 80, is it 86 or 87 units. Or twenty thousand naira. Ah, uh, that is just the whatever. 
and weekly we we weekly we spend on on look look up. This is just something we don't. I don't even understand that country is just weekly we we on on gas to power the generator. We spend I think about almost forty thousand naira weekly to just for on the generator. Almost forty thousand naira weekly. Now the same uh, well, electricity too. I think we use it. I think a weekly or so. You can imagine. So we are we are going to be spending about sixty thousand naira weekly. About there about. 60,000, what am I talking about? It is something will not even, it is something units will not even be enough for us. So we pra pra practically will be we spending almost 80 to 100,000 Naira weekly for ju just for electricity, only electricity just to so for power supply. That's, that's the point. Um, it's, it's, it is all, um, it is all unbelievable. <laughs> We have put ourselves in a cul de sac, in a, a road where we are walking in cycles in Nigeria. So we'll continue to run around in cycles. It's so, so now it's so, it's I don't so see any, any way to break out. No, unfortunately, not. Unfortunately, not. Um, so let's go to, um, let's take this up because I don't know if we we'll have enough time. We we'll, we'll dwell so much on, which is uh, deservedly actually. Let's go to this room. Um, the rumor alliance with uh, between Peter for with uh, Peter Obi and uh, and uh, and uh, Rufai. What is your take? Uh, 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 what's his name? Um, obviously, Bola Tinubu has eventually hired uh, this uh, Daniel Boala as um, a, a, an attack dog. Now, what uh, we, the hint is that um, we are, they have hired. People all around the, the, the uh, around the country to just keep attacking Peter Obi or whatever. And Daniel Boala, who is a smart guy, the guy is very intelligent. Unfortunately, his intelligence and, and brilliance is, is channeled um, towards the, neg the negative aspect of life. Unfortunately, towards, towards selfishness and self-aggrandizement. Um, otherwise, I've listened to that guy. The guy is so eloquent, so charismatic. Um, he's got he's got a very very wonderful gift, but unfortunately. The gift is um, geared towards um, selfishness. That's just the unfortunate thing. What is your opinion about that? Um, what 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 are you hearing about this issue of alliance? We, um, I think I have my opinion about that, but uh, let's hear yours first. Yes, um, I I believe we have mentioned on this uh, forum on Jibrin's angle before, and I made the point that before twenty twenty seven. As is usual in Nigeria, there will be an at attempt to realign forces to challenge the dominant uh, ruling uh, ruling class, so to speak, not even ruling party. So we are seeing elements of that move uh, already trying to um, show their faces. Uh, Erufai has met SDP officials on at least two occasions. And he fit into the narrative that things are going to be happening to try to align, to challenge uh, the Tinubu's administration for 2027. Uh, the other angle was Atiku Abaka's move to create a mega party. You are already aware of that. The Erufa angle and Peter Obi's angle is there. The rumors are everywhere that they want to come together and identify a platform or failing that, create a new platform. So that visit or those visits to SDP uh, officials seem to be the platform they have uh, picked to use, if it is possible, failing which probably a new platform will uh, emerge or a combination of uh, current existing parties would uh, unite. To yeah, but, but, but my question, I need you to focus on, my question is this, um, what, 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 what possibility do you see um, with um, Peter Obik aligning with, uh, align with, uh, um, with uh, Erufai? Yes, I was coming to that. In Nigerian politics, no alignment 
who will succeed, except there is a dominant personality that is already accepted by everybody. The 2015-2014 alignment and the formation of APC was possible because everybody lined up be, be, behind uh, Buhari. He was the dominant person. Nobody was going to actually challenge him for the ticket of the party. But when you now come to Peter Obi and uh, Rufai and other participants in the, the policy, where no single person has the dominance that Buhari had at that time, I can bet you right now and here that that alliance will not go anywhere. The mistake they used to make is instead of from the word go ab initio solving the problem, lining up behind somebody, then bringing other people, they will say, okay, let us first build a platform. Then we can talk about who will lead that platform later. And that is always the undoing of such alliance because of the geopolitics of Nigeria. Assuming today, Rufai and Peter will be come together and start building a platform like the SDP or any other platform. When 2027 approaches, the question, which is the real question in every political party in Nigeria, is who will be the flag bearer of that party? The national chairman, other officers are not important. The person is the person who will ultimately win executive power in Nigeria. That is what matters. So assuming for the sake of argument that they come together, when 2027 approaches, the personal ambition of Rufai and that of uh, Peter Obi will ensure that that alliance will not be credible enough to challenge the existing uh, power structure. The reason is Peter Obi has come so far and he has aroused so much curiosity and uh, patronage particularly among the youth nationwide. He will not play second fiddle. He will not agree to go back and contest as vice president to anybody. And knowing Rufai, he too, he, he conceives of himself as the dominant Northern politician today. And he will not agree to play second fiddle to anybody. So that is landmines that are already there. Yeah, if they want um... to go ahead, they should remove it. But having said that, the the group they want to challenge, the Ahmed Tinubu group they want to challenge, is headed by a master Nigerian politician. The man knows how the Nigerian mentality, the man knows the Nigerian politician. He knows that all what they want is to be fed. Give them something and you have settled it. You mentioned Daniel Boiler. This is a young man that is by all means brilliant, but he has shown no single integrity. Apparently, when you are out of government in Nigeria terms, in a few months you begin to suffer financial hardship. So you whatever comes your way in that way, you take it. So Tinubu knows this. Even though if you see the kind of statement that Daniel Bola made against Tinubu, for him to take him on, back on, now and honestly, take his position, honestly. he understands that whoever talks against him, if he gives you position and you are you accept and be quiet, you will line up behind him. <laughs> so he understands the mentality of the average Nigerian politician in detail. And he also understands the use of the power of the president. And you have made the point here that even when he didn't have the executive power as president, he was able to maneuver himself into power. Is it now that his president, with all the executive powers, that they will defeat him? Yes. By what combination? Who is the dominant political party? Consider General Buhari his antecedent. It's later now that, as our people say, the wind blew and we now see the gnash of the yes. power. Before that time, people treated him like a god. But we now know that uh, there is not it was an empty vessel. So yeah, we don't have that. We don't even have that kind of personality. Yeah, 
You're right. That actually, all this to line up. So I don't see how this the realignment will be a critical or credible challenge in uh, in 2027. Yeah, honestly, I me mean, when I when I had that that statement, I, I don't. I just shook my head. I just knew this is. I just say it is dead on arrival. There are so many odds against that union. There are so many odds against such an alignment. So many odds. In fact, Peter will be and Erufai are really, really opposite of opposite, opposite sides of the coin. That is just the truth because uh, Peter uh, 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 Peter Obu is a humble person. Uh, um, Rufai is a man so full of himself. Is um is feels he feels he's larger than life. A sort of so um besides what the cardinal policy what 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 is he bringing to the table? Is it what there is nothing? Look at he has plunged the cardinal into another chaos, financial chaos. He plunged the cardinal into security chaos that they are up to now. They are still they are not they have not he's getting worse at this moment. And now, I also, we don't discover that he has he plunged Cardinal into financial chaos. So that is the problem. Is that what he's going to take to the table? It, that Erufai can never be sold to Nigerians. Um, apart from that, we know what he, he, uh, he we know him as a religious bigot. It's 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 a it's a proven thing. He has spoken. He has said the, he has he has made statements, public statements to this regard. Who who will vote for him? That, that guy is just a no, he, he's just he can he can he can never look. Peter will be an Erufai will be the worst, the worst strange bed bedfellows if such thing happens. It's dead on arrival. That's not even something people should even contemplate because these are two opposite. Peter will be will never, I just like you noted, besides he as far as I'm concerned, he's the most popular or popular of them right now. A sort of so under normal circumstances, um he so he should be the front runner of the or the 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 uh, uh, flag bearer. But just like you noted again, um, <laughs> the the uh, the almighty arrogant Hausa Fulanis will not accept that. A sort of they will not never accept that. They, they will still do the same thing. This crazy um, what's his name? Um, this Kanu man, Kwankwaso did, or out of pride and arrogance. Uh, he was supposed to be the vice president, uh, running mate of uh, to Peter Obi, but out of arrogance and pride, the Hausa man and Hausa Fulani's arrogance, he just um, he just felt he berated, he be, uh, be, be, belittled um, uh, Peter Obi uh, because uh, he felt he has uh, political uh, knowledge. And crazy, so the same thing will happen. You see, these are the reasons why. Um, one of the reasons, actually, why I just feel Peter Obi's time is just gone. Unfortunately, I love that man. I wish that man. You see, my my problem again uh, about Peter Obi, um, uh, my comments against his candidate is not it's not uh, it's not personal. Honestly, Peter Obi is the best president. Is is the best president Nigeria never had. I'm using this past tense because he will never be. He will never be. He was supposed to be in 2023, but we missed that mark. Nigerians, including Peter Obi, and Nigerians missed that opportunity. We were supposed to take that, that opportunity of popularity, both internationally and locally. Everybody, the man was popular everywhere globally. We, we failed to cash, to cash in to that opportunity. We failed. Peter Obi himself failed to manage the situation uh, well to actually pilot it in the right direction. He can't, uh, he can't be, that man is just too gentle to be a politician. Honestly, that is not, we need the kind of somebody like Donald Trump who have a very strong fighting spirit, who fights back. The more you fight him, the more he, get, he gets stronger. That is the kind of person, not like Peter will be the moment people kill, you bash him this way, bash him this way, and he comes into the, he comes on air and begin to, uh, let us not fight, let us not do this. Like, it begins to, look, politics, power, you, power is not gentle. Getting power is not gentle. Empowering yourself is not gentle. You have to be aggressive. Aggressive doesn't mean you have to go carry gun, no. Aggressive in, ment in your mentality. Mental aggression, psychological aggression. That is just what you have to be. A sort of Peter Obi will not go because he, he is a very he's the best president 
Nigeria, uh, honestly, that is the best president Nigeria could have had. Unfortunately, it is not, it, it doesn't have that fighting spirit. It doesn't have that aggressive spirit to really, really wrest power from the elites, from the establishment. So um, that is just, anyway, this is sure of uh, whatever. Like you said, and you noted earlier, I've, not, I've said it before. Nobody is taking power from Tinubu. Regrettably, unfortunately, it is a nightmare to me. Anytime I just view the whole, the whole, view the whole situation, Nigerian situation, and I just tell myself, I just judge, just, just judge the situation based on what I see. And I come to conclusion that we just, we are stuck with, with Tinubu for the next seven more years. That is the point. It is the bitter truth. I, I hate to say that. I hate for such thing to come out of my but that is the reality on ground. <clears throat> we cannot, nobody can wrest power from. I, I keep saying using this analogy. If he did it when he was not in power, what makes you think he cannot do it when he has all the apparatus of government at his disposal? That is just that that is just uh, that is just it. Um, unfortunately, the word, uh, the word out here is that uh, Rufai is gearing himself up. Uh, in Chalaji Tinubu, he has um, mapped out two strategies. One is Liga, where he wants to go to court to clear his name. You know, he was termed as a security risk, and that is for the reason that he, he could not be confirmed as a minister yes and and um, it was considered an, a humiliation and embarrassment considering his efforts in bringing helping to bring tinubu to power so his strategy now is to go to court to clear his name from being as being tagged as a nationalist and then to prepare himself to challenge uh, tinubu in 2027 apparently with the backing of the North. So those are the two strategies. The word is out on the street that, that is, those are his two uh, arrowhead uh, Look, strategies. Nationally, na honestly, nationally, uh, as far as I'm concerned, but, uh, what's his name? Erufai is a political lightweight nationally. Lightweight. Even in, because the only in the north, the only thing he is use, he's using, he can use to get the noise is of religion. He's a religious bigot. It's not something. It's not rumor. It's something he has made. He has made it known to the public. With video, we've had videos of him making these statements. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, about against Christians and against other parts of the country. It's sort of so he can't. Is that, let's not even. Buhari is a uh, uh, what's his name? Erufai. Uh, is a lightweight when it comes to politics. I don't even see him as a threat to for God's sake. Now, who want who want to threaten by, by Buhari? Uh, what's his name? Tinubu with all the well, whatever the muscles, the the political muscles Tinubu has. Erufai, that hypocrite who bites fingers that the finger that fed, that, that, that fed him, eh? who bites, beats and bites. I remember during Obasanjo time, he beat Obasanjo's finger that fed him, and he's still biting. And he keeps biting. Fingers that fed that 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 that, that fed him, and sort of so is that guy is that is going nowhere. I don't even want to that man. I I don't want to use that word that I hate him because it's just the man is just evil. It's it's, it's a it's, it's a personification. The man's personality, everything about him is a personification, an epitome, a hub and pivot of evil. That is what that man is. It's everything, everything but a good man. That is just it. Um, now let's talk about this Cardinal State stuff. Uh, coming back to Cardinal State, <laughs> um, uh, that I don't know. Honestly, Cardinal State, I still see McCarthy. Mc, I don't know why that man just went. His political career just went, just went, just went down the drain. People like that are the people who deserve to be in the limelight. For God's sake. McCarthy's regime in Kaduna, I, I don't know about you. We all are Kaduna people. 
a sort of so, but that's my judgment, though. That's my opinion. Going by what he did, how there are so many indices that makes him the best to me. He was the man who actually, he was the man of peace who brought Christians and Muslims together, who established that peace. We, he managed that, 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 this volatile part of the state so perfectly, so perfectly. And the economy of the state too, he tried his best. He wasn't, he's not a perfect, he wasn't a perfect person. He was corrupt too, but the truth is that we know that McCarthy, though he was corrupt, but he, worked, he did so many things for Cardinal State. He achieved a lot. And as such, they say in the, in the, in the, in the community of blind men, one-eyed man is a king. He was corrupt, but among, so going by all the governors we've had in Cardinal um, so far, I, 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 consider him, I consider him the best. Um, I'm telling you, even though as, as imperfect as he may be, a sort of soul. Um, now, what? Let me ask you for before I I I air my own view. What is the situation with Kadna? I, I see that uh, the Roma. You know, I told you this thing. I think I don't. I remember. I don't think. I don't know if you still remember that me um, telling you about this issue of. Um, Godfatherism that usually you, you is you are uh, you one is instrumental to you someone being a governor and the governor becomes uh, the, the two of them come just like what is happening in Potako in River State a sort of that Ubasani will not will hardly play um a second fiddle to to um Erufai. and I think that is what is exactly playing out. What is your opinion? What's going on in Kadna uh, Barrister? Can I like, can you explain to us? Uh, yes, uh, in the nature of Nigerian politics, uh, Godfather and Godson, we have seen, uh, is a very difficult relationship to manage all across the state. It's extremely difficult to manage. The Godfather says, uh, look, I put you there. You are my boy. And the Godson feels that I'm the executive governor of the state. The responsibility rests on my table. Uh, it is my time. You, the godfather, had your time. You ruled with a strong hand. I should also have the opportunity to rule. So it's a very difficult uh, relationship to manage. And sometimes even not out of spite, a statement that you can make in good faith will now be used as uh, as if you have casting an aspersion on your godfather. Now take the instance of um, Obasani when he was addressing a town hall meeting and was bemoaning the challenges that he faced as governor. Why he's not uh, why he's finding it difficult to pay salaries, and he said that he met a mountain of debts. Uh, in terms of uh, foreign uh, currency. About five hundred and eighty something million dollars. Yes. If you convert that in naira, it Ash. is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of naira. Then the naira component of the debt is about eighty something it's, billion. Eighty something billion, yeah. And uh -huh. then the contractual component, those contracts that are there, ongoing, finished, due to be paid, almost a hundred and something uh, billion. So he was trying to let the, the, the people know that, look, these are the challenges I faced. And uh, the, he gave an example. That month's allocation from Fed, uh, Federation account of $9 billion. Uh, seven, six point something billion was deducted to service some of those debts. So instead of the $9 billion coming to the state, about two point something billion came to the state. And the wage bill of the state is about five point something billion. So this was the explanation innocently. I don't think he was targeting uh, his godfather, Erufai. But then you see in this, the relationship is so delicate that anything you say, even innocently, if he cast, if he looks bad on the godfather, 
it will be taken as an attack. Yeah, but fire. yeah, but but no matter what, even though if, if even though he did it innocently, um, the the son, Erufai's son, very irresponsible. What do you expect from a wicked man? A wicked that's man, you have no... that, that's what I'm trying to say. And <laughs> so Erufai's uh, group now had to come out. Uh, not only a Rufai son, there's a, a woman leader of the APC as well. Yes, who also I, came I out. That, yes. Uh -huh. So we can now say a Rufai group took it as a personal uh, attack. Affront, attack on the former governor, yeah. and they, they now responded, say unprintable things against Ubasani, say how incompetent he is, how he spent all his time in Abuja. They, they said everything. They, yeah. they, there was no hold body there. So you can see the relationship has degenerated already. Mercifully, the the governor said he will not dignify uh, on with a response on his tyrant. So they, they, they kept quiet. Otherwise, maybe the back and, back and forth would have continued. You say this, the government responds, you say this. But I think he, he demonstrated a little bit of maturity. Maturity, yes. By not um, uh, taking on uh, Rufai's uh, son. Uh, son. Yeah. But of course, they say that if you see somebody dancing by the roadside, there are some dramas inside the bush. So if a Rufai should come out, uh, a Rufai son should come out and say all those things. It is perceived that the Rufai is, is backing uh, him. That uh, this has been cleared with the father. Yes. Or at least it's, it it's follows a well the fit. father's line of things. Yes. Otherwise, the son would not have been bold enough to come out. You can to... you you can you can imagine the same Rufai now that is oh my god. Nigeria is so I don't know why I'm so tolerant. The same Rufai now wants to come and con he wants to contest for presidency. That's why I asked earlier, what is what is his resume? What is in his resume? What resume is he bringing to the table? Resume of corruption? Do you know, look? I, I wrote down, like you said, for the, what Kaduna is owing right now: five hundred and seventy plus. I think almost five eighty million dollars. They are owing debt loan, an external loan. Then you have another eighty something billion the billion naira. That is old contractors, unpaid money. Contractors are so he executed. You can imagine all those. So now, what did you do with uh, you bought you? What the hell did you do with all this money? Now you borrow. Hold on, mention. hold on, please. The, now you borrowed. You borrow five hundred and seventy, about almost five hundred and eighty million dollars. What one will just ex, well, would, uh, will expect that? Okay, the, you actually used it for capital projects. To pay contractors or whatever. So where is the seven, eight, almost uh, over eighty billion naira coming from? Be over eighty billion naira debt to contractors. That that where is it coming from? A sort of so that is just. And uh, we you have another one hundred seven. Okay, oh it's okay. Old one hundred and seven contractors. Over eighty, so over eighty billion naira owed to contractors, one hundred and seven contractors, then pays another six billion monthly to service debt, six billion naira monthly to service debt. Then you have another eight hundred million naira monthly paid, paid to contractors. He's only contractors about eighty billion dollars naira. He pays monthly 80, 800 million naira monthly. That is Cardinal State President Governor. That's what he's paying now. 800 million naira monthly to contractors. And you have 6 billion naira paid to service the loan. <laughs> Tell me, Cardinal State is dead. The economy is dead. How will this con how will the state survive? Erufa has killed Cardinal. He killed Kaduna security wise. Kaduna, you can imagine the whole Kaduna, the headquarter of northern Nigeria, does not have a viable, a viable airport, a functioning airport, an airport that someone can. You can imagine it goes off and on. Sometimes no flight goes there. Sometimes, or sometimes no flights go, go goes there, and or even when they go, 
it's just one flight. To can, can you imagine? That's the head, the hub of the knot, the pivot, the just literally the foundation of the knot. That is what Erufai has turned Kaduna into. He has, he has, he has, he has finished Kaduna security wise. He has finished Kaduna uh, economy wise. And this same crazy person is still has has the impetus, the temerity, the guts, the infantry <laughs> to begin to aspire to become the president of Nigeria. That man, if as Yoruba will always say, eh, I, or, I, 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 I don't know how to speak it. He ori no way. He had no correct. Eh? And Nigerians. We are crazy. We are just, we are so docile. Look at, for God's sake, in a same climb, we, we, we still, we, this, you can, such a person still come out shamelessly to you vie see, uh, for public office. This is, all, all, this is see, unbelievable. You see, what I told people, I have lived in Kaduna since the days of uh, uh, the military administration of Kone Abaka Omar. Yeah, Omar, thank you. Are. And I have always made the comparison that in all my nearly 40 years of stay here, I've seen all the governors from uh, Kone Abaka Omar to Omar, yes. the governor. And I have singled out only two governors. I was a governor then too. Yes, uh, Abu Kauma and uh, uh, for the military and uh, for the military Mac and uh, McAfee yes. for the civilian. Uh, yeah. Those are the two governors. Yeah, Abu Kauma, really, you're right. Uh, really did something. Yes. Uh, in the first tenure of uh, of Erufai, when people ignorant people because of propaganda, we are making mouth that Erufai has turned Kaduna into a construction zone. The news was everywhere that if you go to Kaduna, yeah. everywhere is construction, the whole Kaduna state. We were here. We knew what was on the ground. Our people say that um, we have a special drum. They said that the sound of the drum is, is louder from afar than from near. So it is the same thing. We that were in Kaduna, resident of Kaduna knew what was happening. But the people that are outside, including out of Nigeria, depending on propaganda that they hear, the whole uh, of uh, Kaduna has been turned into a construction zone. Some uh, two kilometer roads within the township, there are junctions. The architects and this team made it and they splashed it on the, on the television and online. As you come to Kaduna, the roads have become like New York, like uh, mm -hmm. London. We were here. We know what the truth was. But in the context of propaganda, you that don't have a voice, nobody hears you. Until you come to Kaduna and reside there and listen to us before you know the truth. And I used to tell people, you are doing some few roads, beautifying the center of the town. Yes. At what expense? At whose expense? At the at the, indi at the at, indigenous expense. Because at, he, at he looked at the funds. At what expense and at whose expense? Yes. You dismissed 27,000 teachers. For four years, you did not pay them a single cobo. You did not pay them the entitlements. But you are constructing a two-kilometer road, a five-kilometer road to beautify uh, the town, the center of the town. That road... The whole purpose of government is for the human beings, is for men, is for men and women, is for the living. If you construct a beautiful road, is it not for the citizens? Everything you are to do is for the citizens. Well, of course. So as between the salaries and, and the workers' entitlements and the construction of a road, which one has a priority? If you have money to pay your worker salary and the entitlements, and you take it and construct a road, is that a good and wise deployment of resources? It cannot be. 
because the focus of governance is the people, is to improve the welfare. If the person who has a family, who is your worker, you have dismissed him, you have not paid him his entitlement to enable him to settle down and engage in something. You have deprived him of his pride as a father because he can't take care of his children. You have deprived him in his old age of taking good care of himself yeah. in terms of feeding, in terms of medical. The children, most of them will have to drop out of school and become vagabonds and criminals. So when all these things were happening and we were seeing the cost in human terms, we know that it is uh, uh, just to do it to achieve propaganda status. It was not benefiting the people of Kaduna. And today, I insist that it is not benefiting. The markets that were destroyed and rebuilt, the average person cannot um, afford the store there. So what is the basis of saying that you have done? What have you actually done for Kaduna State? Nothing. Nothing has done, he, has, he has polarized the states um, and, uh, religion, religious <laughs> wise. You polarized no every, Honestly, everything no just. Security. You, you did not succeed in uniting the people. Instead, you honestly. were the key instrument. Honestly. honestly. In separating people according to religion. Honestly. So, when everybody, anybody, anybody who does not know talk or verify, I just laugh. I just laugh. Um, that is so sad, honestly. Very, very sad. Very sad. Um, let's talk about the uh, briefly. I just want because time. I didn't expect us to last to stay this long. Actually, um, can you give us? Um, I I don't know. I don't know if you are aware of what happened recently between Fubara and Wike. And that, um, and what is happening? Look, Wike, I see Wike's political career just, um, just honestly, that man's days are numbered politically because he seemed to be, um, he, he, he seemed to be getting over, over the old distance seemed to be getting over his head. What is your, what do you have, you got to say, what's your opinion about what's happening in the current event uh, in Port Harcourt, River State? Between Wike and uh, Wike and, and Fubara um, and the betrayal been, and what is happening between Wike and uh, the betrayal of uh, Wike on uh, Peter Odile. As between um, uh, Fubara and Wike, the battle never finished. I think they all piped down at a point to re strategize. At one point, I thought uh, uh, Fubara was too weak, and I believe we talk about it here on this platform. Yes. Why you express the view that you, the man is too weak? Too weak, but, yes. Yeah, with the benefit of hindsight, I think he only he only uh, <laughs> looked for that lure in the fight to re-strategize and to grab more apparatus of power so that he will be in a better position to fight his adversary. We are seeing that now he's taking over uh, structures of governance. Yeah. He's also bringing uh, uh, wiki uh, supporters to his side. Some of the members, you know, the entire National Assembly caucus from River State was 100% behind uh, wiki. Some of them are defecting now and coming to uh, Pubara's side. Now, Wike Squatter with uh, OGD, of which he has come out now to openly say that he no longer has uh, the respect that he used to have on Peter oh, OGD. Yes. And the reason is or oh, can be traced to a simple point that at this point, at the height of the crisis, when he wanted to uh, remove Pubara, he did not get the support of uh, Peter Peter Odile. Odile. Who led other prominent people in Liver State to resist Wicke's attempt to remove, uh, remove uh, Fubara. Fubara? If yeah. you remember, Peter Odili was part of the delegation that went to see uh, Tinubu yes. on that issue. So it Wicke being the kind of person he is, I don't think he has forgiven uh, <laughs> Peter Odili for 
that role because with the resurgence of the of uh, Fubara now, I think Wuke is now thinking if he has finished this problem at that time, he will not have to face it yes. now. And he couldn't finish it at that time because of AYC, because of Soso, and he mentioned uh, Peter uh, Peter Ode. Ode. So he, 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 that is where he is now having uh, a sort of hatred, so to speak, against uh, Peter, Peter Odili. Because it appears that Fubara is on the ascendancy yeah. in this conflict yeah. between him and uh, his former uh, godfather. All right. Um, yeah, honestly, my own opinion and judgment, I see, I see, I see Audley falling politically. It's going to fall. Um, you see, uh, sorry, I said Audley, uh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> um, we keep falling politically. That guy is going to fall, fall to the ground. If we, he will go into pol uh, political oblivion. That uh, people will they will just people will no longer remember him because um he, he, you want to copy you want to copy Tinubu, eh, to be the Jagaban of Lagos, eh, to be the emperor of Lagos. You have forgotten that the dynamics that played out in Lagos are completely different from what is obtainable in River State. River State is a very complex. You see, that country is another. That state is a very, is very complex, very complex state. We have so many political, big, big political, uh, political big wigs. I mean, so many of them. So, uh, Trubu was literally the only political big wig then in Lagos. Then he was, I think, battling with uh, the, the people that during Obasanjo time, the uh, Labode them. Um, uh, Runse, uh, what were former uh, minister for works and housing. Then those were the just two people that was, and then they even at then, at then, at then, at then, even then they were not that powerful. So Tinubu was just he had he, he was just he, he he just he was just bulldozing through the whole stuff because um the, the, his, his situation then was not complex. It was just a direct it was a run over a rollover, and that's just the truth. Uh, but uh, so uh, you, you look I, when, when someone that's one thing in life I hate people you, you don't try to copy someone everyone everyone has different destiny you want if you want to if you try to copy someone you end up in frustration in frustration because someone that someone succeeded in doing something does not make it does not make it possible for others to to achieve the same the same result no everyone has his own destiny and there are things that you, you there are indices there are dynamics to to life to everything about life life is not life generally is not it's not a straightforward thing it's that it, it is dynamic it's it, it is it's a web it's a web life is a web it is just it goes it comes from here today it, it ends here it starts from here today and ends here so it is just like that. That is what people should understand. So we can should go and sit down. Honestly, I I I foresee him being relieved of of uh, FCT minister uh, uh, ministerial appointment. I tell you, because he's going about Isn't it because it? because the way he's going about it, um, Tinubu will feel will feel will get offended will feel, get offended and will feel threatened. Um, in his party, who feel that this man, after all, is not a party member, is trying to bring his baggage into my party. And so right now, I was, I've, been, I've learned that he has, he's now appointing, <laughs> even in FCT now, he's, he's giving appointments, key appointments to his River State cabal, his, his boys in River State or whatever, still trying to build that political whatever. In a state, in a, in a, in a city, in a state that is not yours, that belongs to a federal state, for God's sake, you still want to no, nobody, nobody has done that in the history of FCT. You want to, you can't do that. So that is just the truth. So I even see Tinubu being getting. I see him being frustrated at his high-handedness, his 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 obstinacy, his recalcitrancy, and eventually I see him 
like, relieving him as, as for, of his uh, ministerial appointment. You wanted to say something, Barista. Even if even if he's not relieved of his appointment, presently he's politically in a no man's land. That is it. His attempt to maintain a, a false fiction that he is not a member of the APC falls flat on his face. Yeah. He continued to pretend that he's a member of the PDP. PDP. That is also a fiction that falls flat on his face. Yeah. The members or the people that control the APC are not comfortable with him coming into the fold because of his antecedent, because of his mercurial nature. They feel that if he is allowed uh, power in the party, of course, a lot. Uh -huh. A lot yes. of them are going to. Talk. Yeah, of course. They, 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 of course, they, they already see what he did to did in PDP uh -huh. now. So they, are not they, they are not comfortable with him in that party. That is it. At the same time, he cannot fully come back to PDP. Yeah, of course. Of course. Not. <laughs> because of what it's a, it's he has a, done. Yeah, it's a lose lose. So he is a, in a political no man's land. Yes. yes. Only time will tell his political fate. In the next few years, Time will tell his political fate. That man is, is just gone. Even to know, I honestly, I, I I don't see Wikis still lasting up to one year as minister. Honestly, honestly, he's gone. Tinubu will relieve him. That guy is just gone. All right, thank you so much, uh, Barista. Once again, viewers, we've been having this brilliant conversation with uh, Barista Austin Manta. Austin Manta is a legal practitioner. A legal practitioner with uh, pedigree in every topic you bring up. He has very deep pedigree in every topic you bring, and I respect him for that. It's sort of so he is um he's been practicing law, real active law for almost forty years. So he's a very very when you are talking about senior lawyers, he is in that league. Very senior lawyer, and um, very and he's very good at what he does as well. Once again, Barista, thank you for this time. Thank you for, again, giving us the privilege to have you on our screen um, out of your busy schedule. Um, we feel we feel appreciated. Thank you so much. Um, once again, viewers, my name is Jibrin, and um, this is Jibrin Angle coming to you on Uweleke TV. Please keep in touch if you, are, if you enjoy this program. This is what um what you get from this platform remain blessed and see you next time bye